We come to this morning's gospel passage in a season of the church where we are focused on celebrating the resurrected Christ. Right? We're in the great 50 days of Easter tide, which is the longest feasting season of the church year, reveling in our risen Lord and the power of God over all things. And yet, each year, regardless of where we are in the lectionary, which is our three-year rotation of readings, right? whether we're in year A or year B or year C, each year we draw this season to a close over the next few Sundays, with a series of passages from the Gospel according to John known as the Farewell Discourse. Have you heard of the Farewell Discourse? Farewell Discourse. It's um, chapters 14 through 17 of John. And it is kind of just what it says. It is Jesus' farewell, right? His last teachings before he goes to the cross. The last things he wants to share before suffering, before death, before everything changes. It might feel strange to you like it does to me to kind of like go back in time, so to speak, right? To read from this series of passages in our calendar after we've already celebrated the miracle that we know is coming, right? Easter morning. But I think it highlights all the more the power of these teachings for our faithfulness in a post-resurrection life. Jesus' statement, I am the vine, is the last of these sort of statements from him in John's Gospel. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the vine. But of all of those, It is the only time Jesus offers an identity to the disciples in relation to himself. It is not just, I am the vine, but also, you are the branches. We know, we know in the Gospels that Jesus is very rarely clear with his teachings, right? Very rarely explicit. And here he gives a very clear relationship. I am the vine, you are the branches. This is unique because it gives direct connection from Jesus to his followers. It gives purpose and definition to his disciples. It names and claims them as something directly connected to this cosmic work that is happening through the life of their Messiah, Jesus, right? And it gives this really great, rich, extended metaphor for us to explore this morning. We who are disciples of Jesus now have had this same claim laid upon our lives. He is the vine and we are the branches. We are all branches grafted into the vine of Jesus by virtue of our baptisms. And as is true in plants, so it is true for us. Who is Wendy? I will not be smited this morning, I hope. Oh, that's a joke. Come on. There's lightning and thunder outside. (laughs) Each of us, each of us is intimately, intricately nourished by the source of our salvation and eternal life because of that grafting. And I don't know about you, but for me, it often feels like a great weight of responsibility to constantly try to grow my branch from that vine. I'm sure it will come as no surprise to the vast majority of you that I often fall into the trap of thinking that I can control the things of my life, that I have the ability to force my own growth That perhaps if I could just say one more prayer or read one more thing or offer one more confession, then my life branch might grow a little more toward the sunlight. It is our duty, isn't it, to grow as disciples, as Christians, as branches. That's what plants do, right? At least people who keep plants alive that tell me so. (laughs) I'm not one of them. 
But today I am reminded with great humility and relief that nowhere in this passage does it say that we are to grow ourselves. It does not say, you are the branches, now stretch them far and wide, grow toward the sky, become bigger. No, it doesn't say that. God's glory is not shown by whose branch grows longest or straightest or thickest. No, today we are reminded that our purpose in being branches grafted to our true vine is to bear fruit. And guess what you and I cannot control? How and what and when we bear fruit. But guess who has the best shot at it? Who has always had the power and ability and patience to tend to the bearing of fruit. The vine grower. Our God, the vine grower, tends to this vineyard every day with love and goodness and grace. God knows the seasons of the earth, the seasons of our lives, the seasons of history. God gives us the nutrients and nourishment we need through Jesus Christ, the vine, so that we might bear the fruit of God. Those fruits which glorify God bloom out of us when and only when we are nourished by the true vine. And God's goodness and grace which tend to us so lovingly and faithfully flow into us and into those fruits so that others might see and know the truth of God by their beauty. It's amazing. It's incredible, this ecosystem of God that we participate in. But there's this sort of scary thing that our gospel passage this morning mentions that comes with being the vine grower and being a vine or a branch. Pruning. My grandmother used to grow the most beautiful roses And I remember sitting on her little gardening bench one day when I was young and watching her prune a rose bush. And I remember asking her something like, Mamie, why do you clip all those branches that grew flowers? Like, I I remember the rose that was right there on that branch. Don't you want it to grow back? And she said, sometimes even for branches that grow very good flowers, If you cut them back just a little, they'll grow even more next season. Now that made no sense to my seven-year-old brain. And it really doesn't make sense to me now as an adult with a brown thumb, okay? (laughs) But still, it is amazing. I find the act of pruning such a faithful one on the part of the vine grower. Because how could you possibly find the courage and the faith to cut off that which you know is fruitful? Especially for the risk of what you hope might be more fruitful at some uncertain point in the future. What an incredibly courageous and faithful process. How can you use what is painful Right, The physical removal or shortening of a piece of a branch, how can you use what is painful and turn it into an opportunity for beauty? I'm not sure I could. And I'm grateful that I don't have to. I am grateful that we have a God who will be faithful for us in His pruning and tending of our lives. But for the branch, for us, it can be terrifying. Right? We, can, we can find our way to understanding like cutting back branches which are hollow and dead and fruitless. Right? There's a sort of logic to that that we can follow or wrap our minds around and get comfortable with even if it's not super easy to hear. But it can be heartbreaking and unsettling and incomprehensible to cut back that which has been beautiful and fruitful. 
It is normal for us to cling to the fruit and the process in place by which it has come to be. Change is hard, any change, but especially change when something good is involved. And so it is perhaps an even greater act of faithfulness that the branch strives to bear fruit even when what has borne fruit before has been cut away. Because the purpose of the branch has not changed, even though the shape of the branch has. Do you see what I'm getting at with this? Metaphors are hard. You see? Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. We do not control the shape of our branch, the spread of our branch, the lifespan of our branch. We hold tightly to the vine, grafted in and nourished by its love and life-giving spirit, and we use that nourishment to allow our lives to bear fruit in whatever way they can. And God tends to the rest. Giving up what is hard and brittle for what is good and beautiful can be pretty desirable and pretty easy. But giving up what is good and beautiful for the hope of something even better can feel impossible. And what do we do with impossible things? We hand them over to a God who does impossible things all the time. So we give our hope and control over to a vine grower whose faithfulness and love can transform our fear and doubt into something even more beautiful and fruitful than we could ask or imagine. emerges that this place, this church, your life is going to burst forth with new fruits of God. And I am sure and I am certain that it is not by our hands or our will that it will be done, but by God's. In God's vineyard, goodness and grace and love pour down on us along with the rain. They soak into us, they nourish and transform us so that the fruits of God's labor might be known through us and in us by our very lives. And so we celebrate, we celebrate, we celebrate the fruit that has already been born. The ministries, the worship, the relationships that have come from the century and a half of seeking and serving Christ in this place but we also give ourselves over to the pruning God has for us so that more beauty and fruitfulness might come in the future. We do it with hope and with a bit of trembling and with purpose because we are not the vine grower, we are the branches. and We are to bear fruit by God's grace and in God's time. May it be even more wondrous and abundant than anything that has come before. Amen.